and leave it to contrarian badass Reggie Middleton. Now, at the time, you were the only analyst in the world to mention that it would starve the banks. Reggie Middleton, who nailed Facebook, by the way. I mean, not to be impolite, but what makes you so special that they all want to read your blog? Um, I can step on toes and be objective, objective and uh, offensively honest. So another aspect of money is transferability. Basically, the ability to move money. Right now, using dumb money, transferability is moderately difficult. It's easy to transfer a small amount of dumb money, uh, especially in its physical form. You take a quarter, a penny, a nickel, a dollar, five dollars, ten, fifteen, twenty, even a couple of hundred dollars, you know, and transfer it in a very small amount like that. As you scale up to larger amounts of money, um, hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars, that smugglers can of course attest to, it's very difficult to transfer it. You have to need briefcases, you hide it in body cavities, and that's for illegal means. But even for legal means, it's very difficult to transfer it, particularly transferring it safely. Of course, in this day and age, physical money has been transferred into digital money, ones and zeros. That's most of the stuff that we actually have in banks. You know, banks do very little business in actual physical dollars. Most of the business is done in digital dollars. But still, transferability is hampered by the dumb money history of digital money. Digital money was based upon physical money, which was dumb, and even though it's become digital, it still retains its dumb money characteristics and ideals. So, the, and the excuse the pun, but the dumbest part of the dumb money, or the dumbest idea of dumb money, is the need, the necessity for an intermediary for you to handle or access your own money. That is a dumb money characteristic from the days when money was dumb due to technological, uh, the lack of technological advances. Today, it's dumb simply because it's a dumb idea. There is no need to use a bank to access money, to send money to somewhere else, or a financial intermediary that will take, you know, three, four, five percent of your money. You know, hello, retail merchants, when you can do so through a P2P network, a peer-to-peer -peer network, at almost a cost-free basis, or near cost-free basis, near frictionless basis, 24 hours a day, you don't have to adhere to banking holidays, banking hours, etc. And again, fees are out the window, um, or at least exorbitant fees are out the window. That makes transferability an issue. Um, now, the US dollar and the US banking system, the European, the euro, and the European banking system are still considered pillars of uh, capitalism. It's still considered foundations of money. But the actual definition of money itself um, includes and incurs transferability. So, using cryptographic currency, we use Bitcoin as a not one example. In my previous video, I made an analogy of Bitcoin um, being a car. And it's a car that many say is all overvalued or is in a, in a bubble because of a rapid increase in price. But imagine if that car was able, it came with its own international global highway that allowed you to drive anywhere there was an internet connection, including overseas, any country. And at the same time, that car was able to avoid all toll roads, all pay bridges, anything that included a price. And in addition, that toll, that road, that international roadway that only this car can travel on was able to power that car at zero cost. So you didn't have to pay for fuel, you didn't have to pay for toll, you didn't have geographic restrictions except for internet access. You could basically go anywhere you want, anytime you want. Now, would that car be of more value than the car that you have to go and lease, rent, or buy a road to travel? And then as you travel that road, you pay for a toll everywhere you go. And then that road is then cut off at every geographic boundary, you know, whether it be country or every physical or socio-political or even sometimes socio-economic boundary or geopolitical boundary. That car is hampered in many different ways. It's hampered from a um, chronological perspective. You know, you can only drive that car between banking hours of, say, um, 7 and 5 p.m. Monday through Friday not Christmas, not uh, New Year's, etc. So now you see a big difference in the value of these cars. You know, car number two or car number one 
is Bitcoin and Bitcoin's inherent transmission network. Coin number two is the dumb dollar. Now digitized, now more capable, but still not very capable because it's based on the dumb dollars foundation or the dumb currencies foundation. Let's not pick on just the dollar. Okay?